Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today's episode is about the all new seven inch tablet from Google and Asus called the Nexus 7. It features Android 4.1 Jelly Bean and an NVIDIA Tegra 3 processor for a phenomenal experience given the extremely aggressive price point. Let's get physical, physical. Come on and get physical. Oh, I didn't see you there. Let's talk about the physical attributes of the Nexus 7. So we'll start with the seven inch IPS screen. It gives you great viewing angles. It gives you vibrant colors. It's IPS, so there's not really much to not like about it. It's not as bright as I've seen on competing tablets. However, it is still a very, very comfortable viewing experience in all of the scenarios where I've already tried the Nexus 7. A couple other things, it has a 1.2 megapixel camera, only a front facing camera, no rear facing camera on this tablet. In order to hit the price point, Google was going for with the release product, some compromises did have to be made. However, I love the overall build quality of the unit. So it's using a Corningware Gorilla Glass on the front and it's using a rubberized grippy backing that honestly is the best tablet backing that I've felt yet. I'm not a big fan of metal backings on tablets because I find them to be slippery and they can make your fingers sweat if the tablet's a little warm and they get all stained and ugly. Whereas with a just a this is awesome. Exactly right, exactly the right thing. In terms of buttons, there's not a whole lot on the Nexus 7. There's your power button as well as your volume rocker. There is also a USB port at the bottom which supports USB on the go, which is very cool. It means it can either act in host mode or device mode, so you can actually plug in something like a keyboard and use it with the Nexus 7, assuming you have a compatible cable. It also has an audio jack at the bottom and a speaker port on the back. And that's pretty much it in terms of the I.O. Given the price points that it's launching at for the 8 and 16 gig versions that are available, one of the most impressive things about the Nexus 7 is the spec. So besides using an IPS screen covered in Corningware glass, you've also got a 1280 by 800 resolution display, which means that your pixel density is very high, which makes the image very clear and less fatiguing for things like reading books. And it also means that you can watch HD movies, that is 720p movies, without any downsampling whatsoever. Very cool stuff. It it has a Tegra 3 quad-core processor, which means it's more than capable of running those movies and whatever else you want to run. And it's great for gaming because the Tegra 3 processor includes a powerful GeForce GPU, which is, can run their global demo, which nothing else can run because it only runs on GeForce. So there you go. If you want to run the global demo, you'll need to get yourself a Tegra 3. In terms of communication, it does not support cellular data, so you're going to have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and near-field communication. Now, near-field communication is really great because if you have another Android 4.1 device user, you can use near-field communication to handshake, and you can use Bluetooth to easily transfer data to each other using Android Beam. The Nexus 7 has the distinction of being the first Android tablet to ship with Jelly Bean 4.1, which has a number of very cool software highlights. So number one should be fairly evident just sitting down and using the device. It's called Project Butter, and what it basically amounts to is the most responsive tablet or smartphone or anything experience that I have ever encountered. It is absolutely beautiful to look at, beautiful to use, and feels very intuitive. They've achieved this using triple buffering, V-Sync, beefed up hardware with the Tegra 3 processor, as well as many software optimization tweaks. They've also done away with the browser. We are now using Chrome for our mobile browsing. Oh, right, one more thing about Project Butter. Text input is the smoothest it's ever been on an Android device. It can detect text and it's snappy and responsive like as fast as you could possibly type. And uh, this has been a major complaint for me on previous versions of Android. So I'm glad to see that they finally got it at the point where it really feels like using a keyboard except that it is touch sensitive. So the Chrome browser replaces the browser browser which just means better compatibility. Although we have lost Flash. You can still install it unofficially but over time it's going to work less and less and less. So Flash is being dropped from Android and moving forward from here. And the other big one that people are talking about is Google Now. So all you have to do is swipe up from the bottom and Google Now will give you suggestions once you've set it up about all kinds of different things. For example, before leaving work, 
Google now will try and suggest to you the best route to take, taking into account things like traffic as well as the route that you know would normally be fastest and then now this one's gonna be fastest, things like construction, closed roads, anything that Google has access to in terms of information, it will try to tell you all about it. If you're leaving for a vacation, it can tell you things like if your flight is delayed. So if you get Google now, all you gotta say is yes, I'm in. Yes, you're giving Google more access to your personal information, however, the main theory is that they will be using it in a way that is beneficial to you, the end user. And for some reason, it's recording what I'm saying right now, and I have no idea why it's bothering to do that. So I guess there's only one way to find out for sure. Looks like it was trying to do a Google search using voice, so that's what it was. Okay, now I'm talking now and it's doing it again. But uh, no, I don't want you to do that for now. So these are the cards that show up if you need them and it, the prediction gets better over time as it gets to know your patterns. And if you want to show more cards or show the sample cards, you can see here. So it'll tell you the weather, traffic, public transit, flights, sports. So it'll get a feel for which teams you follow. It can tell you scores while the game's going on. All that kind of stuff is very, very cool. The Google Google Nexus 7 also comes with a $25 coupon for the Play Store as well as a copy of Transformers Dark of the Moon which will get you started so there's tons of stuff you can get on the Play Store including the largest ebook collection that's available now you can get movies you can, there's over 600,000 apps and games you can have access to magazines and music you can even automatically import your iTunes library over to the Nexus 7 so I think that pretty much wraps it up it's a pretty compelling value proposition and for 200 to 250 bucks you're getting a whole lot of tablet in a very small enclosure for a very good deal. Thank you for checking out this episode of NCIX Tech Tips and don't forget to subscribe.